It's fine. Okay, yeah. let's get started. Okay. okay. We missed you guys. We're back. We had to take a day off, well, a week off of the podcast because we had a wedding to attend to. We flew all we the way to Michigan. The and boy, my, my arms are tired. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Opinions That Don't Matter. I'm Katie. And I'm Sean. We're glad you're here. How do you do? Um, last weekend, we've had we had a busy. July's a busy month. It is. We went to. We haven't even caught them up on Fredericksburg. Okay, so I have a funny story. Now, some of you might be like, Katie, that's too much information. TMI, stop. And some of you might be like, that happened to me too. And others might be like, what the fuck is she talking about? I had what I would call a a funny happenings in Frederick, Fredericksburg. The first night, so first of all, just know Fredericksburg is gorgeous. It's adorable. I love it. But nobody actually grows any grapes there to make any wine. It's a farce. They import. Maybe some people do. So Frederick like four, four is a wine region of Texas or is the wine? I think it's the only wine region in Texas. Maybe there are others. But it's also lots of peaches and pecans, lots of groves of growing. I didn't really see any though, but we'll but get we there. We saw we'll... the peaches. We went to Das Peach House, remember, yeah. and all the trees. And stuff. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So Fredericksburg, for all intents and purposes, we thought it was uh, a wine region. We yeah, went it's about there. two hours out of Austin. Super pretty to visit. It's a really nice tourist town. We'd driven through it on our way when we were moving here because we stayed in this little Airbnb on the lake while we were like getting shit sorted with the house. And we drove through it and we were like, oh, this place is beautiful. Yeah. First of all, there's deer everywhere. So it's kind of like, it is sketchy. countryside. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, those, when you're driving at night. You never know if a deer is going to, you know, rob you or something. So. Yeah, the sketchy deer. Yeah. You know, they jump out and you hit them with your car. But we saw driving through and it was at night, mm -hmm. vineyard, 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 you know, the signs for this and that. And we're like, wow, we got to come back here and just check it out. And like, it must be like Napa. Yeah. Like that's in my head. That's what it was. A year later, we went back to check it out and something was amiss. And it was that there were no grapes in. Yeah. They have this like funny little patch of like grape plants by the road they're not that's not enough to make any wine and yeah it seems limited which yeah. so that they import all their grapes and then they blend it there and they age it which is pretty much winemaking but yeah. it, it just seems a little a little uh different it wasn't yeah. what i was expecting but and the town is great and you you feel like you're in the wild west we went to an outfitter store we did <laughs> and i thought the guy was putting on an act right that's just how he is yeah he was wearing like a full-on what is that called a a, a poncho oh yes the poncho the poncho mm -hmm. and i was like a was, duster jacket but no no and he had like a full-on uh oh, roxy, hi, roxy roxy liked him too she she was not a sidetrack conversation puppy parlance really quick this morning i was the first one to get up and she did not want to get out of her crate she like turned she like wanted to lay back down so I just like put her blanket back, left her crate open, but put the blanket over. So she had darkness and she stayed in there for another hour and a half. Hmm. And then I just got her up. Cause I was like, I, I don't want to have to go potty and we're doing the podcast, random things. So now she's gremlining behind us, which right. means she's playing by herself, which is good. She's being a good girl. So Fredericksburg. Oh, okay. So let's talk about the dude in the funny store. Oh, so we were walking around Fredericksburg and um, you know, I, I'll go into an art gallery. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You get to see artists and they were fantastic artists, but uh, I didn't see any local work. It was um, artists from different areas and that's fine. There was some We had really... some local, remember that one? I mean, Houston. Yeah. Like I didn't, we didn't find any artists from Fredericksburg. Yeah. But I, I also didn't ask for that, you know, yeah. but it was nice, real beautiful art in the galleries. And also they had air conditioning. So that was a plus. It was like 104 when we were there. And for, I think it's also important to know that Fredericksburg is like, rural so that's why hence the like country style uh different clothing outfitters and things like that but it's also german and so the ton of the food is german because it was settled i'd read about it when i was there and it's already like escaping me but it was, it was settled, settled by the 18... french but interestingly enough they spoke german <laughs> no in the 1890s 1880s uh, germans came to that town and started settling and a lot of the the buildings that were made into restaurants and stuff. They're like, this was once a school or a hospital or whatever back in that time. Yeah. A very beautiful place to visit. If you are looking for something to do in the area, I think Fredericksburg gets a, a seven out of 10. It's pretty solid. Yes. It the was wine is terrible, but that's okay. Maybe someone's making good wine. We didn't find it, but here, here was the interesting thing mm -hmm. at our 
uh, where we were staying, mm -hmm, our hotel, mm -hmm. they had wine in the room. None of it was from Fredericksburg or no, Texas. No, it, it was, yeah, it was like a uh, French in California. And French. I was like, oh. okay, that's interesting, but maybe that's just their jam. Mm -hmm. you know? And then we went to a restaurant and on the menu, there was one bottle from Texas and it was under a section called Texas wine. <laughs> and I was like, one bottle needs its own section and everything else was from elsewhere. I was like, what is going on here? I think cause it's not that good yet. They're still learning. They're learning, right? I'd assume. Yeah. And interestingly enough some of the vineyard properties mm -hmm. uh, the estates were some a little were beautiful gauche. and some were gauche mm -hmm. yeah there, there was one that looks like a castle you know but like a really thin a really, really like a thin fake castle. you know wouldn't stand up to any you know uh, army you know no. it was it was made of pa uh, papier mache you know? yeah it was like only deep enough for like two hotel rooms to be in you know what i mean like it was not it was a thin tall faux castle yeah on the top of this hill and it was like stay and drink it Chateau, da 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 da. Chateau screw top. Yeah, we were like mm. October was a good month, you know, and uh, I thought that's a really strange vineyard until we were five minutes down the road and we saw another one, and this one looked like uh, uh, Lac de Triomphe. You know, it was like uh, uh, really strange on another one on a hilltop, and it was just an arch. Yeah, and, yeah. It's <laughs> I was like, where's the rest of the hotel? No. That's the concept. See, you live or you stay inside of the the arch. And I was like, oh. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but downtown Fredericksburg was adorable. The homes are beautiful. Everything has been kept in this kind of like, almost look like the Alamo type things, like very Texas style homes made out of limestone. It's beautiful and it, super adorable. The food was delicious. We ate at a place called a Sage Restaurant amazing we ate at august ease also very good yeah. had a drink at chase's place we had breakfast at the old german bakery yeah. we did all the things it was great and uh, it was a nice weekend to unwind we mm -hmm. saw some fun stuff it was very warm we we had uh, some wine that was okay and uh, then we had it home yeah it was really fun um but my story yes it's all important, not really important to know where we were, but that's what was happening. And it was like 104. And we stayed in this uh, hotel that was pretty much downtown. It was like two blocks from the main street. Oh, I really liked it. The Winchester. Yeah, the Winchester Inn. It was really cute. Um, my only complaint was that the air conditioner didn't just run. It just like would kick on and off and sometimes wake me up. It was a little loud. But that was it. So if I had to have a complaint about would, the weekend, you know. That, that would be the only complaint. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so... <laughs> because it's so hot and uh you know we're walking i'm wearing like a loose flowy dress and i wear what is known as nippies that's what they're called in lieu of a constraining and sweat producing bra you put these like little nipple covers essentially on and it's good and if you're a lady i'm wearing or some a dude right now. who has you're like i know what those are it totally makes sense some people do the sticker ones and those are just like one time use these are just like you wash and rewear kind of thing I've had them for years. I've worn them to Palm Springs. We, I wear them all over. Never had any problems. We go out to dinner that first night to the August Ease place and we're eating and da, 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 and we come, we go get drinks and then we walk home. And when we get back to our hotel and I'm changing my pajamas, I am missing one. You were very distraught. I lost a nippy. Well, you know, I only have one pair and I lost one. So right, right. I did, essentially it's like it didn't have them throw the second one out, you know. Well, no, I kept it in case I lose my next because I bought another set. Now. Oh, oh, that makes sense. You know, because yeah, yeah. well, if you lose one, then I, I, gotta, I never know when you're going to need a spare. Everybody needs a spare. There you go. Anyway. <laughs> so then I tell Sean, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like looking on the floor of the hotel. I'm like, did it just drop out somewhere? And he's like, no, you know what I noticed? I think at the at rest, the restaurant. Yeah. I don't think you had it on. And I'm like, it didn't even make it to the first stop. So then every time we'd walk out of our hotel room, I'd be like, Nippy, where is she? She's got to be here somewhere like on the side of the road. And what I'm concerned happened because we walk into town is that you and me are just standing at that light waiting to cross the main street to head towards the restaurant. And like that thing just flops out of my dress onto the ground. How embarrassing. Uh, no one said anything, so I think you're good to go. So I put up posters missing. I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, RIP. Yeah, yeah. This happens. You yeah. know where they're like, I left my heart in San Francisco. I left my nippy in Fredericksburg. <laughs> oh, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> it's a t-shirt. So that was, that was funny, and you can laugh at me slash with me. I was distraught because, you know, we'd been through some good times, me and my nippies. But, you know, we left one in Fredericksburg. 
pour one out for my uh, pour one out my for homie. my nippy. Yeah. Um, anyway, we had a really good time. It was fun, and it was just good to get away. Man, those beds were comfortable. All the furniture in the hotel was like because they're really into antiquing. Like and people go to Fredericksburg to find antiques for their house, and our room was like all beautiful old antique furniture. It was very strange. I mean, it looked we like we had little stairs to get onto our bed. Yeah, <laughs> that was interesting. I climbed three stairs to get up onto the bed. Mm -hmm. It's not like the bed was giant size. It was just that it was very tall. It was easier to get on it from the steps. But my, we, do giants live here? You know, but you could like fling your leg over it and get on. You know, yes, roll. It was nice. Duck and roll. Yeah, we had a really good time. Yep. And then uh, after that, we came back and then we we flew to um, Detroit. And I've Detroit, never been to Michigan. It's cool, right? Michigan. Michigan. That's how they can talk. Michigan. Yeah. A little bit. It's a pretty good accent. You know? Yeah. It's funny. I never realized how thick it was. I mean, we, we know Tonja's, but she doesn't have like a thick mic. She can pour it on, though. I'm sure if she's around it enough, yeah. right? But it's a good accent it's kind of fun. It's fun i really like the people in michigan yeah and it was interesting interesting to uh, fly into detroit and which is a nice airport yeah and, beautiful airport but uh it's sad because you can see the bones of what detroit once was mm -hmm. it's like downtown la in parts too i know that that's a little different but the way that it kind of looks you guys is like <clears throat> these old beautiful brick like mansions that are now either completely decrepit and have wood over the windows, like a call them like a, a, a burnout house or like a, you know, a flop, a flop house, like a condemned thing. And a lot of that, or what happened in LA is they've been broken into like, a, like six apartments. Do you know what I mean? And they're kind of like weird and they add extra right. doors and it's like, you see the bones of what used to be. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't really know the the great history of Detroit other than um, the, yeah, the automobile automotive. industry, right? Yeah. Uh, and and they were producing a bajillion cars and then other industries were attracted to that. And so there was a lot of wealth concentrated in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it was doing before that. I would assume it was just a, the gateway to the, the Great Lakes uh, maybe or something, you know? Yeah. But, well, not the gateway, but you know, it was, but you'd go there because it's on the lakes and stuff, yeah. Yeah, but you know, once the automobile industry happened, then it was just so the wealth was so concentrated, and you can see it from the skyscrapers to the homes. I mean, it mm -hmm. it must have been spectacular in its heyday. Yeah, and there's a ton of things. If you don't know, Ford is out of Detroit. Is Ford and Chevrolet right? I think all automobile. Uh, all <laughs> I can't. Speak. Automobile. All automobile uh, businesses american mm -hmm. automobile industry uh concentrated there because okay. ford started off there that's where the assembly line is yep. invented but there's a ton of things in the town that'll be like Dodge. henry ford uh memorial hospital or the ford family such as such. So they're like, still around i think they still control a big portion of ford i'd assume so i think his great grandson is um i don't think he's ceo right now but anyway anyway but it was it was uh interesting to see because i'd never been it would have been cool to see it in its heyday. But we weren't at a wedding in Detroit. We went out of the city by like 45 minutes or so right. into a place called Bloomfield Hills. West Bloomfield? West Bloomfield Hills? Yeah. West Beautiful Bloomfield. Beautiful area. Anyway, Man. gorgeous. And that's when it is like LA a little in the way that like you go through downtown, you're like, oh, don't get out of your car. It's kind of sketch. And then you, let's say you happen to be in, I don't know, find yourself in Beverly Hills or Hancock Park, which is like adjacent to downtown. That's like bougie McBougeville. And this is, that's where we were staying. We stayed in a beautiful hotel though. It was like only two stories. It was like a little double tree or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, lovely staff, l delicious food. And we had to go to a wedding out there and it was beautiful. Yeah. At Lamar a country club. got married. We were fancy. Yeah, Sean's one of Sean's best friends got married. It was great. I, it was fun to connect with people I haven't seen uh, since the pandemic. I know. So it's been a couple of years. And even before that, there was people that I hadn't seen in a long time, you know, just the way life goes. It's the way and, she goes. Yeah, the way she goes, Katie. Mm -hmm. But reconnecting with people was fantastic and seeing where people are in life. And and um, it's it's strange when you haven't talked to somebody for a while, but mm -hmm. you, you have a good connection, you pick up right where you left off. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's interesting. I, it was cool for me to put faces to names of people you've mentioned over the years. Right. Because 
like one of Lamar's best friends, his name is Will, and he lives in Florida. And Sean had gone out there years and years ago, and he was like, oh, you'd love him and his wife, and blah, blah, blah. And I'd heard about them over and over, but never got to meet them. And I got to meet them at the wedding. That was wonderful. And I did love Jamie, his wife. She was wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then just to see Lamar's family again, because I hadn't seen them since the pandemic. And so it was it was great. Also, it was a Chaldean wedding, which if you don't know, Chaldeans are- Iraqi Christians. Iraqi, yeah, Catholics. And- yeah. And it was interesting because, I mean, first of all, we've been to how many different types of weddings, I feel like, over the years. It's cool to see their traditions, and they had, like, traditional dances and all sorts. There's all sorts of stuff throughout the end, not just, like, the ceremony itself, but also the reception. And it mm -hmm. was very cool. I don't understand any of it. I didn't do any of it because I couldn't keep up with the steps. Yeah, I didn't get the dancing Lamar's was like, tough. just follow along. Just follow. His <laughs> wife, Crystal, is like, just follow along. And Jamie and I were like, and I'm out. <laughs> stomp, stomp. I'm off. Okay, I'm out. I don't want to mess this up for you guys. The the volume was, was the music was really loud mm -hmm. for me. And I was like, whoa. I walked by the speaker one time and people were partying. Like it was hooting yeah. and hollering. And it, it was, was, it was a lot bar. of fun. People getting rowdy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there was that but it made me because the music was so loud i was like oh i should bring earplugs because i bring earplugs to concerts i encourage all of you to do that so you don't damage your it hearing. was like a concert you're right and i should have brought my earplugs there i just didn't think about it but christian our friend christian he was smart enough he had brought in earplugs yeah and he showed me a decibel meter yeah, and, and it was like it was in the 95 is danger <laughs> and it was like and it was like 90, 355 no yeah. it was like 90 97 93 it was like right around there the whole time yeah but a good time was had by all. So then we came back from Detroit. It was a quick turnaround yep. trip. Boom, boom. We get back. Roxy is Roxy. She's fine. Um, yep. She was at, she was boarded for a couple of nights, and I was sure she thought she'd done something wrong. Right, because mm -hmm. she went right back to the. Mm -hmm. She only had like three days, and yeah. then she was back. But she got along just fine. She got in trouble again. Doesn't like other dogs. I don't know what to well, do. Well, it's not that she doesn't like other dogs, but she she they gets rowdy. Yeah, and I don't know what I don't know. You guys, I feel like because we don't have other dogs i feel like we should take our neighbor up that wants them to play and is fine with them being rowdy and just let it happen maybe yeah, I don't have to we know. have a neighbor that has invited us over for play dates and we have not taken her up on her offer yeah but sean and i aren't that social so we, right right it's one of those things where you're like uh-huh and in your head you're like that's never gonna happen but i feel like we probably should have said uh-huh and been like let's get your number <laughs> yeah let's make this happen our dog's a lunatic yeah she's such a good girl that's the crazy thing she doesn't have we don't i mean she jumps that's her only thing right now is she jumps up on people but she's not a bad dog not a bad dog at all love her doesn't try to bite us at all or anything you know what i mean she's not yeah so. i would not want to be a lizard because she's definitely no, she kill a hot you. trot or an armadillo did i tell you about the beehive outside yes that's really cool i think you did you talk about it last time did he you guys do you I remember know. i think you did on did your I? walks okay mm -hmm. yeah because i feel like i remember this because i'd already seen the pictures oh okay yeah well anyways the beehive's still going strong i'm i'm enamored by it and Bees a piece important. fell off of it and i was like oh. did they reject it did of they the kick hive it yeah but oh. not a huge piece just a small little edge and it's like a yellowy brown so i think it's like wax you know oh interesting yeah but they i don't know if they pushed it out or if it was knocked out Oh, by somebody or by uh, a bird? Doesn't, it doesn't look damaged. There's just a zillion bees kind of slowly moving, doing their little bee dance. It's funny when they're really slow because they're like working. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. I find it very fascinating. And bees are really important to our environment. So it's good that we have them. Yep. Remember when they had the bee flu? We were like, oh no, we're all going to die. <coughs> <clears throat> yes. Yes. So what else has happened in our life? I think that's it. We can get into letters. Well, we've, we've been all about town. And now yeah. I am taking... Um, under advisement, I'm just kidding. Any of your guys's input on where we should actually take a vacation? Cause Sean and I need a proper vacation. And I've been looking all over town. I've been looking and we thought maybe we'd go to Hawaii. Flights are expensive. Hawaii is expensive, but maybe we would try to consider it. Cuba, oh, we should go to Cuba. You can't say that, you're American. Why not? We can go now. <laughs> try I to think, stop me. I think you would have, there's no direct flights, right? Currently from the United States. You yeah, have to, no, it's I think, open. Mm -mm. Yeah, Courtney went and Evan went. I think they had to fly through Mexico though. You, you. Oh, maybe it doesn't matter. Either yeah. way, we're so close to Mexico. Let's just drive out. Yeah, but you, you can go. You just, you know, they don't stamp your passport or something like that. It's like uh, that was back in the day. I think some things have shifted. I don't know what the rules are, but I know I can go. I think under the Obama, uh, Obama administration, you they relaxed some of the rules, yeah. and then I think they tightened them back up under Trump. Mm, 
I don't know. I'll know. look into it. But I know Cuba. I've had friends go recently. So I'm like, yeah. I'd really like to go. Um, looked into that. Um, then also just last night, I was looking into Charleston, North Carolina, because like everybody, it's been top rated four years in a row, one of the top cities to visit in the States. It looks beautiful. Every time I see it on the travel channel. there's cute little hotels. I was like, maybe we go there because that's a shorter flight, which would be a little cheaper. Flights are crazy. Oh, BT yeah. BT-dub. It was... Uh, Five hundred and sixty something bucks just for each per person for us to fly to and from Detroit. And Detroit's not that far. It was like no. What is it? Three hours? Two hours? Yeah, it was three hours. Just yeah. under three hours. Yeah. It was like two hours and forty five minutes. Which when we used to fly from L.A. to Seattle to see my family, same length of a flight, and we'd get those tickets for like one seventy five. The staff were wonderful. They were so nice on the plane. Yeah, everybody was lovely. We honestly had no hiccups, yeah. and in they didn't our seem travel. overworked. No, but the pilot. Hmm, on our on our flight back, it was a little bumpy. I'm not gonna lie. I was. That was the flight out, where it was like. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think of the flight back was. Was the, it back? Yeah, okay. it was. It was. There was a couple of moments where like the plane lost altitude. Oh yeah, because I almost felt sick. Yeah. I was like, oh. Like, oh man, is this the end? Oh no. The things I should have done with my life, you know, <laughs> flash before my eyes. As the plane goes down. Yeah. No, but we were fine. We were fine. Everything was good. But there, there, it was a little dicey. It was a dicey. Yeah. Dicey. I'm okay with it though. A little excitement, you know? Yeah, gotta, you gotta shake things up. Right? Jolt of adrenaline before you land. <gasps> Clear yeah. your sinuses. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, oh, take oh a look you're at, not done yet. No, we'll you take have a look things. at that. I, uh, I, I'm not interested. Oh. Guys, I found quite possibly, <laughs> and maybe one of you wants to go. I'm not on this buying one. anything from Alibaba. I'm sorry. I'm not getting in any anything that it needs a motor and i'm like moving at a faster speed or in the air or on the ground from made and all i'm not doing it well this absolutely is absolutely not this Safety is a, first a, an rv first of all a recreational vehicle like you know you, a motor home again on, not interested in a motor uh, it's uh an electric vehicle motor home how does that sound does that spice it up a little mm -mm. for you it i told you i'm not buying anything but it's fuel efficient because it's an electric vehicle and here's the kicker mm -hmm. It only has three wheels. So, I mean, that is a, is that a motorcycle motorhome? What if somebody jumps onto people? one side of it? Does it go? Oh, I don't know, but I would, I would be hesitant, but I can picture Roxy, you and I looking at that windshield, discovering America in our electric RV. Me gesturing to people passing by. Help me, I'm being kidnapped. <laughs> it's only $4,800. So that's also terrifying. Again, safety first. Does anybody yeah. else feel that way? There's like certain things that you want to get a good deal on. There's certain things you don't. Like I don't want to get a good deal on an RV that I'm going to put my family in and drive around in. And I also don't want to get a good deal on LASIK eye surgery. Mm. Okay. You know? I'll pass on this one then. I just thought I'd bring it up because I. <laughs> you forget that I watched that YouTube video with you of that guy Look putting. Look how beautiful it is though. Remember that guy? Oh no. That guy putting that um, truck together from, was it China? Oh Yes. Well, that's where this comes from, too. It it's, was uh, It was, and he had like parts. He didn't know where they went. And stop you guys, the, when I tell you. Stop the press. Oh. It's not very fast. The speed uh, caps out at just around 25 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so you could basically. You can't take her on the open road. <laughs> yeah, an Olympic runner is faster than this thing. Uh, so that's 40 kilometers an hour. Mm. Yeah, that's, I didn't get that far in the, okay. That probably won't work for us. Oh, you can't go up a hill with it. No, nope. no, no. Yeah. Oh, it and for backwards. a motorhome, you need to, you know, go a distance before you yep. lay your head down to rest. How far do you think that our electric motorhome goes? You'd hope it'd go like 10 hours, but I'm guessing it goes like two. It goes 72 to 96 miles. Oh, <laughs> so, you can drive and for that's, like an hour and a half. And it's also when it's not loaded. So, boy, this is... This is not That's working why it's out. so cheap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, there's more. Well, you can upgrade. <laughs> no. But the upgrade is not for four wheels and it's not for more distance. It's just for a little bit more space. So uh, that probably shrink your distance. Man, I'm such a cheapskate. I got to stop looking at these things. This, you do. Alibaba is not where it's at. Well, it could be, you know, maybe, maybe I'll find the deal. No, and, maybe for like new cups or a coaster. Right. How did oh. you get lead poisoning? Well, I bought these you know, fantastic cups <laughs> off of Alibaba. And uh, I don't trust it. Has anybody bought anything off of Alibaba and put it together? If you have, please write us in otdmpod at gmail.com. Okay, now we have some letters. Oh, uh, okay. And I'm excited. Ooh, ah, okay. This is from our awesome Toronto contributor, Aaron. Uh -huh. Hi, Aaron. And it is entitled, 
I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. And that's all. Okay. Okay. It says, hello, Katie, Sean, Roxy, and the OTDM family. I am so excited and really proud of myself. I finally made a website for my chain mail and it only took eight years to make. Hooray! Amazing. It is still a work in progress, but the majority of it is complete. And you can put the link in the description if you want, because I don't know how to share it in the podcast. Oh, in the like comments and stuff. Okay. I've decided that uh, that this is my birthday present to myself because my birthday is in 19 days, July 11th. Oh, Erin, we're this. She's at 1983, just like me. Well, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Update on mom. Okay, remember her mom um, had been in, in and out of the hospital. Is home from the hospital after being there for five weeks. Holy schmoles. It's a lot of jello too. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of food. tasteless food. Yeah, that needs salt. She's doing quite well. We ha- um, have PSWs coming. I'd assume that's uh, physical sort. work or something. I don't know. Yeah, helpers, nurses maybe. Um, coming to a day when they show up a nurse for her wound and a pt opt to help her with her exercises Mm -hmm. and we have a care coordinator who i just haven't met yet i am truly just grateful that she's home because she could have died or had her leg amputated remember she had an infection thank god tomorrow i start a cbt depression group and i'm scared and excited it's an online group working closely with the book mind over mood i've heard really good things about that book i haven't used it myself but it's on my list that's it for me hugs aaron T-A-T-C, the awesome Toronto contributor. Mm-hmm. I love it. And then we'll put her her website link. Yep. AaronChainmail.Weebly.com. Weebly. And then also. Beautiful. Making websites is fun. Um, mm-hmm. I used to really enjoy it when I had more time. Uh, you know, because you feel like you're building something. It's like having a Lego kit. Oh, true. But yeah. uh, I didn't really have a lot of instructions when I first started. So they were like hideous looking Legos that I would build, you know? <laughs> well, back in the day, if you guys don't know, when Sean and I first started the YouTube channel, we... Um, we had decided that maybe we would do some YouTube stuff, but we would like to create like a mental health app, like something that people could use to help them. And this was like back in like 2012 or 13. And I went to all these meetings learning about like Ruby on Rails versus JavaScript versus, and you guys, I know nothing. I don't understand. Even as I say that to you, I don't really know what it means. And I took a shitload of notes because you know me, I like to be a good student. And I quickly realized that we would have to find a CTO or a chief technology officer because Sean and I are not it um, and we can't do it all. And then, then we decided it probably wasn't the best idea. Yeah. We didn't have the time because I had job. You guys remember I had multiple jobs. Um, I think I'd been licensed and then we started maybe not. So I might've even been studying for my licensing exam. Lord knows. Yeah. We had so many different iterations of the website. uh, Yeah. yeah. You guys remember when we had snake on there? Oh, and asteroids. Mm-hmm. Remember I, I put asteroids. It was like a hidden feature. I was, I was building little He was like, Easter has anybody eggs. mentioned it yet? Oh, and then some people would. And the fun part was that like, cause we were using WordPress at the time mm-hmm. and I hate WordPress because it's always. There's so bu- so many bugs. Yeah. The and plugins I'm sure are always defaulting. There are some great websites that are built on it. It's a good product. It's just, it to it make a web swipe, uh, to make a great website, you have to. Oh, I was like, what was that word you tried to say? Oops, say Ever a uh, you, you really have to stay on top of it. But I feel like I, it has to be your job to update it. And... But this was before they had website builder sites like Square and mm-hmm. you know Weebly or whatnot. And yeah. so we had created a website that was a clone of Facebook. Mm. So, and it was pretty good. It had like, you know, you. you just like Facebook, you had your groups and your friends and all this stuff, but then it just became unmanageable. And, you know, trying to, uh, people had squabbles with each other and I'm like, oh no, you know, it was like, and don't take this the wrong way, but it's like having a, an environment that you create like a fish tank yeah. and like all of a sudden like the fish are fighting and i'm not calling the people who are listening fish, fish but like but, yeah. but like i was like oh no stop fighting please stop stop well, and then we had moderators and yeah. then remember you could create not your everyone own, was fighting but like you could create your own posts and i'd have to read them and approve them it just got to be too cumbersome yeah that we were like we don't want to be a social media platform <laughs> yeah so that one was next we're like oh yeah, no so we had to back out so sorry if you love that but I we understand. had the chat the the chat rooms were still going mm-hmm. and then it was just like a messenger mm-hmm. and then i deprecated that well then we moved over to facebook groups because it's just easier to have somebody else updating things. exactly and then you can have real moderator tools instead of <laughs> sean's facebook light <laughs> yeah we tried we did the best we wordpress could. yeah it was it was an interesting time but you know we, we should go in the way back machine and be like this was what the website oh no <laughs> the way back machine. i always remember 
and then we'll get it. We have a, a letter from, you know, the right honorable oh. David redacted. Um, but we, <laughs> I remember when we first started the channel, maybe like a year or two in, we, everybody at the time had these cool intros for their videos, you know, like little songs like do, 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 do. And like things would come in, animations would happen. Well, Sean and I didn't really know any animators. We had no money, but we wanted to do something. And we had, I don't know how we found that tree. It was on Veer. Is that is that right? Is that yeah, the we company? paid for uh, an illustration. We paid yeah, like forty bucks or something yeah. for this illustration of the original tree because you have to like pay to use someone's work, obviously, right? So we paid and got like the the license to use it, and then Sean made that butterfly fly. I'm gonna be honest. I stole the butterfly, uh, but. I transformed it into something totally new. So I went onto, I think it was Wikipedia and I looked mm -hmm. up monarch butterfly and they, they had this, you know, illustration of one. And then I took it into uh, a, an Adobe product. And, and you made it move. I made it move. I, I pinned it, puppeted it and he flew and you gave it a path. I was pretty proud of that. I'm really impressed with it. I yeah. was very, I'm still very proud of it. That's the power of YouTube. I took a tutorial on how to do, you know, how to animate something. And yeah, uh, you spent quite a few days on it mm. and turned out beautiful. Yeah. We used it for years. We don't use it anymore. We had to deprecate it. Oh, there it goes now. <laughs> okay. Okay, back into, can we get into David's letter? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's just funny sometimes to think back on what we've done over the years. Okay, this is entitled OTDM Land Day Update. I'm excited. Mm. A rich vocabulary and a real life plot twist. I'm excited about all these things. Okay says, hello, Katie, Sean, and the OTDM universe. It is the right honorable David redacted prime minister of OTDM land, giving you a quick update about our great country. OTDM land day update. We are gearing up for OTDM land day to celebrate. We're putting on a three day festival. People can come out, be themselves, make friends and build their community. I love all of this. Also at the festival, we have great, highly talented. Oh, we should make a website for this. Uh, <gasps> you know, maybe a uh, um, using WordPress, WordPress just <laughs> put the butterfly <laughs> I'll set up a profile on MySpace. it's going to be great <laughs> um okay so they can show up be themselves build their community also at the festival we have great highly talented performers appearing we have the singers who sing everything the dancers who dance everything and the showgirls who show and the acrobats <laughs> then on the festival the festival's final evening We'll set up a large wooden structure built like a human and light it on fire. Shall oh. we call this festival Blazing Woman? <laughs> <laughs> Burning if Man you guys is don't so... Know, yeah, Burning Man is a, an event. I would assume most people know about it, but it's so mind-boggling to me, and I don't want to go because mainly it looks dirty. It looks very dirty. And I remember Hannah went once, and she said you have to always wear, like, gas masks because yeah. of the amount of dust. And I know that it... So there's people who go... It's in the desert outside of LA. It's not outside of LA though. I think it's Arizona. Oh, is it technically in Arizona? Uh, near it, Phoenix. It's in the know. middle of the fucking desert. No that's idea. all that's important. I yeah. can look it up. It's I'll a massive up. gathering of people and mm -hmm. basically a, a city or a town uh, of people who may or may not know each other appears in the desert and uh, at the end of it, they burn an effigy. The Black Rock Desert, Nevada's. Nevada, Nevada's okay. Black Rock Desert. But I've also heard that this is where tech billionaires go to hang out. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, I don't know, it's a, it's just a strange concept to me, the barter well, system and yeah, like people a, doing a bunch of, uh, you know, substances, not that everyone is doing that, but, but it's a just a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol and everyone's like, so out there. And I think that's cool. Like that's the, a fun, the artist part of it is kind of cool. Yeah. Like there's photographers every year that like just take pictures of people's costumes and right. things. And it's, it's amazing. And I think everyone builds vehicles and like, yeah, you, yes, it, it depends. So I only, okay. I, I know. A little more than the normal person because my favorite lady who used to do my laser hair removal for my arms and my legs um she would go every year oh and i became friends with her laser she had, removal there huh no she's just a nurse and oh. that was just she worked in the hospital and she also worked part-time doing laser hair removal and i just became buds with her she also did yoga at one of my studios so we would like keep up with each other a little bit anyway she went every year her husband was not into it so she went on her own with her and her girlfriends and there was like this group of them like there's like five five to seven of them they've gone every year for like multiple years and you have to bring a resource so when mm. you go you either they brought water 
so that's they, a good they one had in the big, desert. They had this big water tank truck thing that they would rent. Oh. And um oh, or you could bring wheat and or they had stone. A, and they oh, had, what you, it's the settlers of Catan you're taking me to? <laughs> no, and then they had this little ice machine that they'd bought as well, and that was a big commodity too. Well, heck yeah, ice in the desert. And so but everybody brings different resources, right? And you could bring food, you could bring um, drugs. I know that sounds silly, but let's just be honest here. It's all to bring booze. Aspirin. You could bring first aid. There's a first aid truck and stuff. So anyway, so people try to think of something that a, a self-sufficient community would need. Mm. And you bring those things. So some people bring like vegetables, some people bring, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, anyways, they brought water. And I think they brought one other thing along with their water stuff. And she was essentially saying that like, you don't really shower, you don't like, which I, I immediately grossed out. Also just the amount of dust in the air. I'm like, I couldn't handle it. But she said it was just like the one place where it was just like free to be you and me. Right. And you didn't have to have any money. You like essentially no valuables on you because the value was the whatever resource you brought. Is it and a weekend or a week? I think it's a week. I think it's like five days. Yeah. And then at the end of it, they, they torture they giant burn the thing that man. was created but i like this idea that david has blazing woman yeah because that sounds cool i bet you it'd be pretty well organized um but so let me just wrap up oh. so when you have your resource the way that this works is she would go let's say let's say she wanted breakfast and she needs some eggs or something i don't know and i don't even know how this works so i haven't been there but she'd like go to the person who has food the eggs or whatever and she'd be like hey i've got a gallon of water and give you a gallon of water for a dozen eggs or something they'd be like Sounds like fair trade. Or they'd be like, no, uh, you, you know, you can get a quart of water for a dozen. You know, I don't know how they would figure out what it was worth, but I know water was extremely valuable. So that's why they had always done that because it meant that they could like get whatever they needed and they weren't stressed about it. Right. But having, but they have to ration. So it's like, how much do you use? Because you don't want to sell all your, like trade all your water and then you don't have any water. This anyway. is Settlers of Catan, I'm sure. <laughs> In some version, yes. But anyway, um, and she said that people are like, the thing that she loved about it was it reminded her of the good in people mm -hmm. because people end up lost because it's like this weird, like everybody just pulls up their trailers and their tents. It looks and, overwhelming to me. Mm -hmm. like, it's and huge. Anxiety and provoking. And also probably very cool. You probably learn a lot about yourself, you know? Well, and like uh, wealthy people from LA go, I know like uh, celebrities and stuff, but they have like compounds, like they set up these, and yeah. it's almost like not Burning Man. Then. A lot of people like, Zuckerberg's there, Elon Musk is there, which is strange to think mm -hmm. that you hear these guys out in the desert. It kind of looks like Mad Max to me. It is like Mad Max. Mad but if, Max if we meets had, Woodstock meets. If we had money, like if you got to go VIP, it's almost like me and music festivals. I love a music festival. I just don't like that many people around. I don't mm -hmm. like waiting in line for porta potty that grosses me out. Some people bring beautiful RVs. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we get that RV. Yes. We take it. I mean, it take, might take us a while to get there at 90 miles. <laughs> at that 25 miles, miles an hour. <laughs> Having to recharge every 75 mm -hmm. miles. Look at them. They're so efficient at burning <laughs> men with their electric <laughs> motorhome that sleeps one and a half people. Three wheels. Wow. But people bring their dogs and stuff. I don't know. It just seems a little like, I don't know. It's just not. I don't think it's for us, Sean. We're not those people. You're a germaphobe. I may watch a documentary on it. That, that could be interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah. If anybody knows of any, you let us know. Okay. So back to David. Oh, Sorry, hey, David. David. I will shall call this festival Blazing Woman. It's such a great original idea. Why hasn't anyone thought of this sooner? I know, right? <laughs> I love his uh, dry, dry humor, humor and like snark. That's one of my, it's, it's a great quality, David. I like it. Okay. Moving on. Yes. A rich vocabulary? Question mark. In a previous email, Katie read, literary aspirations should religiously astute polysyllabic orthography. When simplified, the text means use shorter words. I want to take credit for writing it, but the credit goes to the late, great Don Pardo, former announcer of, the, of SNL. <laughs> Don would read out the tongue twisting paragraph to warm his voice before announcing. Mm. Oh, interesting. It's funny how how you do get warmed up reading things like it takes me a little while sometimes when i'm doing things and you get like in it and then i can read things really quickly rubber baby bu buggy bumpers kind of that kind of thing but not necessarily a tongue twister it's more like a like it says tongue twisting paragraph but it's a lot of different sounds so it's like literary aspirations should religiously astute polysyllabic orthography like you have to blah, 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 blah. Mm. where rub rubber baby buggy bumpers is like a lot of bees it's just hard to say right you know he I mean? thrusts his fists against the post and still insists he sees the ghost. What's the one that uh, 
Dwight says before he goes on to the radio show. Remember, he has a thing he says. Oh, yeah. Is it she sells seashells down no, by the seashore? No, it's one I hadn't heard before. But anyway, and um, David links a video of Don Por. I think it's Pardo. I hope I'm saying that right. Reading slash speaking the dialogue. Love it. He had a great voice. Mm. You praise me on my rich and diverse knowledge of words and my ability to string them together into a sentence such as, could you please take this instance, retrieve some sporting apparatus and lodge it into your eternal or internal orifice as I find your unorthodox and quite you unorthodox and quite frankly, dense notions, dumbfounding translation. Go fuck yourself with a baseball bat. You stupid fuck. <laughs> I love it. Dumbfounding. Such a fun word. Apparatus. Language is fun. It is. <laughs> the big big words I, I use. I was lost for words. I was, <laughs> I was lost sure for words. Sure is. You <laughs> betcha. <laughs> the big words I use may be a way of compensating for my insecurities. Hey, we all got them. Which we will not go, in psychologi <laughs> go psychologically in depth into as it exceeds the scope of this podcast. Correct. It is out of the scope. You see, I'm dyslexic. Wait, did I spell that right? Yes. Yes, I did. Whoever came up with dyslexia should have thought about a simpler word, right? There are so many things like that that I find really interesting. Like, like dyslexic dys of the world, untie, <laughs> you know, instead of unite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's like picking words. Like you think of the people that are going to have to use them. Right. Like, could you make it a more difficult word? Come on now. Okay, I got diagnosed in high school, and I can remember receiving the documentation of my diagnosis for me to read. I learned new words from everyday life, TV, music, people talking, and books with someone's help. And then I would take those $3 words and deposit them into my internal data bank. Mm -hmm. Today, I use some strategies to help with my daily writing and spelling. For example, I use that green online app that I find helpful. That green online app. Oh, I would mention it if only they'd sponsor the podcast. Oh, Damn straight. Thanks, David. Damn straight. Um, I hope it explains some things, or it's just some ramblings from a fictional prime minister of a fictional country based on a weekly podcast. Whisper. Wait, I shouldn't think this way. Maybe I should use bridge statements. I think you should. Correct. Correct, David. Do it. Okay. Mm. Draw bridges are underrated. I think I did that wrong. But let's forget about the fictional things and bridges that I just said. And if you don't forget, I will exercise my prime ministerial powers and give the ultimate punishment. You will get it oh before i go i have three questions for you two to answer all right number one would you rather be bored to death or tickled to death mm, bored to death. bored i can't the tickling i oh, learned it reached you know a small tickle you know like oh well, then you that might was... pee your pants or throw up it's a little bit overwhelming to your yeah, system your system goes into shutdown mode well i learned from a young age being the youngest like in my family and also having a lot of boy cousins and just general uh smart asses in my family people like to prank people and tickle people and bother people i learned how to stop the tickle here's how you do it you think about something else and you bite inside of your bottom of your lip and you think about things that aren't funny at all mm. it works for me shuts it down no tickles that's wild what is a tickle is that I just a, a and why response? can i shut why it did, down why did we uh develop that, that? maybe that, that's just me stuffing it deep in my gullet is it just a, a glitch a defect in in human development is it serve a purpose i don't know we have to i'm very interested i think it's just a side effect of your what your nerves do you know yeah you excite them or i don't know yeah hmm. <laughs> i'm like why do we get tickled but that's not even the right question to ask kate it's, why does the tickle exist why do we why yeah why does the tickle exist? why do we feel tickled yeah <laughs> it's such a funny thing to look okay scientists found being tickled stimulates your hypothalamus what the area of your brain in charge of your emotional reactions but why and your fight flight and pain responses oh. when you're tickled you may be laughing not because you're having fun but because you're having an autonomic emotional response oh. wow that's why I, I i lash out if i get tickled and oh and it's a warning signal to train you to protect yourself it like pushes you into and fight that's why flight. it's like all of your your vulnerable spots okay it's um you know a lot it's why around your neck so that's ah. like a vulnerable spot also um i don't know why your feet though but it shows neck well, armpits stomach too. sides and feet are the most common yeah it's a second oh it has a secondary feature so it's original it's number one feature is a warning signal and training to protect yourself the second feature in humans other than primates and rats, it seems to facilitate some sort of social bonding. But be careful who you tickle. Not all animals experience the same enjoyment, and many humans don't like it either. Hmm. 
I don't, yeah, tickling can be good for your health and well-being if you enjoy it. But some benefits include stress management because it generates a sense of well-being and can reduce stress and anxiety. I don't believe I that. I do like doing that on my forearm. The forearm tickle is nice. I just do it to myself, sometimes to soothe. Yeah, yeah, you do like that. And I, my friend Carrie Peterson liked that growing up. And I think then I right here on, my, on the inside of my, the, Funny. the bend of my arm, I like that. Yeah, sometimes I'll tickle your arms at night. I'm, I know you like that, but it's weird. I don't like it at all. Mm. Funny. I don't like being tickled. Okay, for Sean. Yes. Would you rather have crushed blacks or blown out whites? Oh, well, so I don't like a, so he, he's referring to video or to film, mm -hmm. but video in this instance. And uh, when you crush the blacks, basically like this microphone mm -hmm. uh, would go like, you know, you're, you're bringing the black level down mm. uh, and blown out whites is um, it's, you get above 110 IRE, mm -hmm. which is the, or over 100 IRE, but okay. 110 What's is- What's IRE stand for, do you know? Hmm, no, the brightness value, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> That's okay, yeah. I don't know all the, you know. I should know, but it's basically no, but there's uh, the certain brightness things We scale. just know what it means. And yeah, and but you, if you blow it out, if you go over, it clips, and then there's no data. The so, Institute of Radio Engineers. Oh, there you go, yeah. The people who basically did television uh -huh. back in the day. That's funny. Yeah, and uh, so, I would never have known that that sort of. I would. I would probably uh, prefer to have the the blacks crushed because mm -hmm. that that means that your picture isn't overexposed. Yeah. But I really don't like that look. I don't like a crushed. You don't like either. Yeah. But if you had to pick, right? It's like no one wants to be bored to death or tickled mm -hmm. to death. But yeah. when you have to choose, you'd say crushed blacks. Yeah, I think so. Okay, for Katie, would you rather fight one thousand duck sized therapist or one therapist sized duck? Mm. Birds are terrifying, Katie. Birds are terrifying. Ducks are unpredictable. But a one big duck or a thousand little ducks? A thousand little ducks, that's easy. Yeah, just what do you kick them? Yeah, well, Maybe put them in a cage? It would be a bloody mess. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to fight a giant duck. You ever seen Howard the Duck? Yeah, terrifying. That's such a good film. But maybe, maybe one therapist-sized duck, because if I can get it distracted, then I'm good. Mm. Okay, there, there you have it, David. I'm gonna I'm, go with one. Okay. I hope you all have a good weekend. Till next time, the right honorable, oh, the right honor pal, David Redacted, your dyslexic prime, mini, prime miser of OTDM lamb. Huh. <laughs> P.S. Don't forget that you need to forget or else you'll get it. Remember? <laughs> I forget. I, I forget. forget. I already forgot. P.S.S. Though I was diagnosed in high school, 16 years ago, I actually learned about my diagnosis six months ago. As I said earlier, I was given the documentation but could not comprehend it. Gee, I wonder why. Losers, why would they do that to you? The only other person who knew about my diagnosis was my mom. Why she didn't tell me is complicated and messy, but suffice it to say, I was the last person to know that I was dyslexic. I bet you didn't see that plot twist coming. Mm. <laughs> why, sometimes, I have to be honest, and I'm not speaking to your mom, David, because I don't know, you know, maybe she, you know, She's doing the best she could, and that might not be good enough, but she's at the end still the best she could. Um, I find parents in my line of work, whether I'm in schools or in therapy settings, parents, no matter what age their child is, have an incredibly difficult time admitting that something is wrong with their child more than the child. The child's like, something's wrong, like immediately. Like, I don't like this. I don't feel good, blah, blah, blah. And the parents are like, no, 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 no. You're fine. Hmm. You're perfect. You're beautiful. And I think... So if you're a parent, just, you know, just put this in your brain and think about it for a bit. Because I assume parents think that by admitting something is wrong with their child, they have to admit they've done something wrong, which might be the case, but often isn't. There's a lot of genetic predispositions, which I guess we could say like we passed on bad genes, but we all got bad genes somewhere in I've there. I've got some bad genes from the 90s. I've got some bell bottoms I wish I really? hadn't bought. No, I'm just kidding. You know me, I purge everything. I was thinking about getting um, a, uh, a full like a, a mechanics uniform in Ooh. jean, you know? Mm. They sell those on It's on almost Levi's. like Canadian tuxedo, but taken to the next level. Yeah, it just looks super comfortable. Everybody loves a jumpsuit. Yeah. You know? Because for a little while there, I was gonna get some bad jeans that are overalls, see? Because I had some of those in, oh, yeah, in the 1990s. Oh yeah, you been talking about those for a while. And I, 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 I really, really enjoyed having I mean, overalls. I guess we're kind of in the country, you get away with it. Yeah. I also have to call you Bubba from now on. You That's know, cool. When you wear your but I, I kind of like We overalls. wear a t-shirt under it though. People who don't wear t-shirts yeah, 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 overalls, for sure. it's like for a whole sure. other level. Yeah. No offense if you do. I'm just speaking from my own personal preference. Yeah. Oh, I would even put them underneath. Like, mm -hmm. 
you know, you don't have to know that I'm wearing overalls. Oh yeah, you can put something over it. So you just, they look a little free. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Maybe we should just buy you some sweatpants. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. But Jean anyway. sweatpants. Oh, nothing more uncomfortable than jeans. Um, but anyways, parents always feel like it's they've done something wrong or that in some way by diagnosing a child or whatever that you're like blaming the parent, even if there's been no, there's no blame to go around. It just is what it is. And so therefore they sometimes will pull their kids out of getting help or not like agree to the help or even be like, I've had parents get angry at me for like, defensive maybe right yes yeah it's it's a defense mechanism but anyway so hopefully that wasn't what happened to you david but i find that 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 can explain sometimes why parents are neglectful it's not on purpose kind of you know okay letter from leanne ah, i'm moving on okay Ready? our pnw correspondent take it easy david we'll talk to you soon yes and thank you for all your work you do for otdm universe okay this is entitled please forgive my short-term memory loss and other things uh -huh. we've all got it it's okay, okay. Hi there, Katie, Sean, Roxy, and the OTDM community. I just recently, within the last month, June of 2022, okay. listened to some of your older episodes. Oh, I just boy. can't remember which ones, and I wanted to share some stuff. All right. Questions Going down memory lane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we ready? Yeah. Was that Wayne's World where they used to do uh -huh. that? Okay. He's like alternate ending. They did it in Scooby-Doo sometimes, too. I think that's where they got it from. Oh. Okay. Just can't remember which episodes. So that's where we're at. I wanted to share some stuff. Questions that you guys asked to write in. Just clueless on what episodes they came from. And I just started blending episodes together. That's okay. I totally understand. One time you asked about cute, weird, or odd city names. Here's one that has a weird name. That's when we were looking at houses and we were talking about Nutty Brown Road and all the ridiculous names oh. around here. Boring Oregon. B -O -R. Way to sell it, you know, from a marketing, pro but maybe it's such a fantastic place. They don't want anybody. They don't want anyone to know. So they're like stink it. town. Yeah. Poopville. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 40 minutes driving from Portland, Oregon. And I've only driven through it. I wonder where it, where it is. I'll have to look it up because I've driven around Oregon too. So I'm like, hmm, we have relatives in central Oregon, which is about three and a half hours driving distance away. Any of your listeners from Scotland? I listen to your podcast. It's just a lot to catch. Oh, to catch where the listeners are from. Yeah, oh. we have. You there's can, a map. Yeah, there's a map. Uh, it's in the description, right? The, uh, yes, uh, it's in the Discord, Discord. server, and uh, David. David is is uh, tracking everyone. So it's you can kind of hop odd. over no, there. No, you can hop over there, Leanne, and you can even drop your pin. Yeah. and say that you're from Portland. Or, it's pretty cool. Though. Yeah, you get to see where everyone's at. You know, uh -huh. the community. Um, I've never been there, but Dole, Scotland is paired with boring Oregon. I believe they're sister cities, mm -hmm. definitely paired together. Google has images. It's funny that there are sister cities. Um, we were just looking up one in Texas that's a sister city was somewhere in Louisiana. And the name is very similar, remember? Yeah. I forget what they, what they were, but I was like, sister cities are always kind of fun. This is probably from a different episode. It's, I've been listening to episodes where Christoph writes in and clearly he's been writing and listening in longer than I have. Sorry, Christoph, some episodes way back. You're from Austria changed to you're from australia and me thinking wow that's far away from me in oregon me thinking dang katie and sean's podcast does reach all over the world then we're just moving through these you guys in a more recent episode something clicked you were sharing something about people getting austria and australia mixed up with each other and i've actually been to austria and have a t-shirt saying there are no kangaroos in austria <laughs> i'll send a picture of it if i can find one Back in 2018, when my mom and two sisters and I were there, we went to the Sound of Music biking tour in Salzburg. Did I say that right, Salzburg? If I can find a picture of that, I'll also attach it. That sounds beautiful. I'd love to go back to like Switzerland and Austria and go to that. There's so many places region. to see. It's it's wild, and I would love to see it more. But I'd like to. I always say this, but I'd like to spend more time. Yeah, I know. You know I now that we have Roxy, it's a little trickier. But my mama says she'll come in and watch her. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get. You know, we can. Have her do it for a bit, and then we can have, you know, maybe Fabs will step in. <laughs> okay. Only thing was, so went on the, oh, sorry, back to the biking tour. If I can find a picture, I'll attach it. As kids, we loved it, and the bike tour was so much fun. The only thing was, there were no bike helmets, mm -hmm. but we got over that pretty quickly. Is it because we're safety first in the States? I think bike helmets really are a, a modern uh mm protective uh, device i don't remember bike helmets when i was a child well i didn't wear them as a when i was well actually i think i did always 
I never wore one. When my brother and I would bike around, sometimes we wouldn't wear them. But when my mom would like put your helmet on. Yeah, only when I raced. So when I was a kid, I raced the BMX, BMX. Um, in competition, and you'd have to wear a helmet then to okay. be on the BMX track. It was mandatory. maybe it's like our generations because the eight years difference between us. Maybe that's when things shifted to more. Yeah, I remember kind of thinking in my head, "Oh, it's silly because it was illegal to ride a bicycle on the street." I think when I moved to California, that that's when mm -hmm. I first saw that law, and I was like, "What? You can't ride your bike on the street without a helmet? Come on!" Yeah, but the truth is, um, you should falling down and hitting your head. Because remember when when I met you, I didn't used to wear a helmet uh, mountain biking. Yeah, well, mount no, it was a mountain. I thought it was mm -hmm. snowboarding. I don't remember mountain biking. Um, I well, just, no, I actually, mountain bike that much. Mountain biking, I did wear a helmet, but yeah, you had a helmet. Yeah, it's snowboarding. I started wearing it when I was in Jasper. That's mm. right. When I was living in Jasper, wearing a helmet because I went to the bike store and I, I'd been riding around Jasper on a mountain bike mm -hmm. and enjoying it. But then they showed me a helmet because one of the guys from the store had crashed and the helmet was crushed and he was okay. Oh, wow. But the helmet was destroyed. When you crash with a mountain bike helmet, you throw it away right away. Like yeah, you can't once, use once it. you hit it, it's it's no longer effective. You right. And uh, it, know that. it looked nasty. And then I was like, oh, I should get one. Yeah, I think. So it was mountain biking. I did wear one. I still have my helmet. But on the street, I was like, who needs one, you know? Yeah. And then snowboarding, you got me into wearing one. Yeah. Well, because, you know, you don't. I want you to hit your head and forget who you are. I'm from like a, a, an older generation, you know, like uh, just prior to, like when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. men were still not wearing helmets playing hockey well even barry your psychiatrist he and you guys have met barry he's lovely he hadn't worn a helmet skiing in forever and it was like i mean i've known barry for a long time i guess now but it wasn't long after i met him he started wearing one mm -hmm. and he was uh he said he thought he was going to hate it and it was going to like dim all his senses because he can't hear as well right and, uh, and he's gonna but he said now he feels weird without it well i remember when sunny bono crashed yeah so, yeah sonny bono and uh he he i think he went to coma and there's been died. a lot of people that's happened to mm -hmm. and Hannah. so you know you start thinking maybe i should and you know like because yeah. you you can be going very quick and hit your head on ice or hit yeah, a tree it's or, dangerous safety yeah. first people put on your helmets okay moving on to other things yeah. <laughs> it says june 10th is when i downloaded the geocaching app caching oh caching geocaching yeah. app the green logo on my iphone it's become an obsession like i will drive out of my way to find a geocache. Like I won't drive out of my way or accept an Instacart order if the house is far away from the store. Yeah, you get paid more, but gas still costs money. The app stops reimbursing us. What? Reimbursing us for gas on June 15th, which is annoying, but don't even get me started with pumping your own gas. I can't believe they're not going to reimburse Instacart people. Is that That's what you're wild. saying, Leanne? Because we, we utilize Instacart and gas is so expensive right now for mm. people. That's a bummer. I don't know how that system works for, you know. I don't either, the, uh, like on the other side. Yeah. I know, uh, I used to have a patient who did uh, uh, Postmates, so I mm -hmm. knew that, but that's the only one I know of. Okay, have you guys or anyone else geocached before? I did a little in the past, but now it's become an obsession. June 14th of 2022 was my first find while using the app and just marked my 18th find on June 23rd. That's pretty quick. I've been an Instacart shopper since May of 2022, and it's not great, but I'm making a little money. I'm at 51 orders as of today. Oh, cool. And that was June 23rd. In the U.S., Oregon, and New Jersey, there are two states. Oh, Oregon and New Jersey are the two states that don't pump their own gas. It's oh, I remember that when we drove through Oregon. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It's hilarious to see friends of mine who went out of Oregon for school. See lots of Insta stories of the in the past of saying, hey, college friends, this is called a gas attendant. <laughs> Well, people will try to get out and start pumping and they're used to it because Oregon's surrounded by states that all pump their own gas. Right. So, but you get kind of used to it as a Washingtonian that would go into Portland and stuff. You get used to just like giving them your card and then they bring it back and they pump your gas. I remember being a kid and, and you know, you'd have self-serve or full service. Mm -hmm. And that was just like mind blowing to me because mm -hmm. it's a little cheaper to, mm -hmm. to self-serve, you know? Yeah. But I always thought that's pretty fancy to have someone pump your gas. Yeah, they do that in LA. They have a lot of the full serve, mm. but yeah, it's funny. I did full service once when I was a sales rep because I needed, I had to get some work done and like I had to be on a call and I needed like my windshield wash. I need to do wiper fluid and you know, and so mm -hmm. I just was like, can you guys do that stuff? And the guy was like, yeah. And so I just gave him like a $5 tip and it was beautiful. It was amazing. Awesome. Also work paid for my gas. So I did it that matter. Okay. You may or may not find this funny. Wait, funny is not the right word. Let me just say it and look forward to hearing your guys' reactions. 
My sister Allison, the one closer in age to me, back when she was in college, she went to the East Coast and not just the East Coast, a school that felt like the farthest school that you could get away from us. So she went like all the way. Mm. She didn't get her driver's license until she was in her 20s. She just said she wasn't ready. My whole family, sibling wise, besides my brother, didn't get their permit or license till a bit after they were 15 or 16 years old. We just weren't. Oh, we were just not ready as teenagers. Oh, let's get back to the point. Sorry about getting sidetracked. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. It happens to Sean and I all podcast, every podcast. Anyways, Allison had no driver's license at the time. and Her college friend from New Jersey could drive and they were road tripping to who knows where. Her friend, um, I don't know. Let's name her Jackie because I don't know this friend. But Jackie had no idea about this pumping gas thing either um, because she's from New Jersey. She's asking the gal, my sister, who's from Oregon and also doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> So neither one of them knew how to pump their own gas. Mm. Not a good just sit there waiting. Not for a good to group to go road tripping. <laughs> Don't go too far. Stay in your state. <laughs> Flash forward to the current. Allison can now drive, and she's been living not in Oregon or in New Jersey. So I guess we could say she's figured out how to pump her own gas. Where for me, let's just not go there. <laughs> wow. Okay, that was a lot. I will write letter. Write later. Leanne, P and W, and 10 gold stars for pronouncing Meng. Wasn't it Meng? Meng? I forget now. Meng? Remember her middle name? Oh, yeah, Meng. Meng, correctly? Sorry. I, I was, was just thinking about not like not the ability to have someone pumping your gas. It's quite a luxury. It's, it is nice. And you get kind of spoiled with it. Yeah. When we used to go down to Portland more, and just, you know, when I lived home, you'd be in Oregon more. And it, it is kind of nice. Some people prefer to like fill up there just because then you just don't have to deal with it. For me, it, it's because I'm a germaphobe. I don't like touching the machine. Yeah. And I don't like touching the handle. Yeah, you and Larry. Larry doesn't like if he gets any scent of gas on him. He's yeah. like, absolutely not. Yeah. I don't really get bothered. I don't know. So, I think in a lot of things in my life that people find bothersome, I'm always like, just do it quick. Like we had our fridge. Um so we have construction still going on for the love of God. I hope it's over soon. Um, things are moving at a glacial pace, but we, the guys have to plug into a plug in on our home because the garage electricity has been like cut because they're working on it. Right. We can't have them like, Whoa. so they plug into the stuff on our house and we had to run an extension cord because we have our old fridge from our apartment in our garage where we keep like you know pop and beer and whatever potato extra, salad from 10 years ago you no know. extra like uh, meat and stuff in the freezer all sorts of things anyway they kicked they flipped the breaker on accident and everything we didn't realize it's been like 100 degrees and everything went bad and sean realized when he went out after we got back from fredericksburg i think it happened that weekend is what happened so when we got back everything was rotten and Sean realized it and you were, you didn't want to deal with it because it's gross, right? It smells, it's horrible. And I was like, do it quick, just put it in the garbage. It will clean it up. And that's just how I am with stuff. I'm like, do it quick. Don't think about it. I don't yeah. like doing this either, but just get it over with. And I, I don't know. My mom and I are both that way. I think it might just be like the like, I don't know. It's like the stance I take when changing diapers or something. I'm like, just fucking do it quick. Just get it away. Roll it up, throw it in the garbage. Then we'll deal with the rest. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Things that are gross and you don't like doing, do it quick. That's my advice for the day. Okay. Anyways, and it says, P.S. Shoot, I can't find the photos. I'll send them when I find them. No stress at all. I, in my brain, I can still visualize it. Okay. All right, let's We go. have another letter. Oh. Oh, this is nice. This is from Kara. And it's entitled OTDM Praise. Praise hands. Praise hands. So I just want to say thank you for how you handled the discussion on Roe v. Wade. It was clear you were in support of abortion, but you talked about it without degrading someone like me who is pro-life. Thank you for speaking so kindly and also encouraging others to speak and act kindly. Ah, cool. I, I appreciate that letter a lot. I, was, I do too, because I was very nervous because people get so heated about things and rightfully so, you know, people get emotionally invested in certain things. Um, I always get nervous to tiptoe into those waters because our goal is never to offend anyone. It's more just to have co real conversations, which I right. miss. I think we need to have more real conversations. Yeah. And for the most part, we're a lighthearted comedy uh, podcast or yep. not comedy, but conversation. Is this comedy? Is that what comedy is? No, <laughs> I'm not very funny, but you know, it, it, it was important to talk about. I thought and well, it was a big deal and it's still going on. And yeah. Yeah. And also there were some people who didn't like the way we, we handled it. And that's, that's fair too. You know, I, well, I, people can, I think, and I don't, I haven't read any of the comments because I don't need that in my brain. But I think 
sometimes people when someone doesn't get as heated as someone feels yeah they can be mad that you're not as heated yes and and i i respect that i i get it i just um, try to keep a a steady uh i don't know what the word i'm looking for but like keep it melt if you're just listening i'm making this hand gesture keep it chill man just like well not not, not get too emotionally invested like to be not steadfast but just like wise mind about it right and also it, there's a long game that that is here you know so okay that's yeah. what, what that's what happened uh roe v wade is uh, you know been dismantled mm -hmm. or whatever they called overturned. it overturned overturned thank you and you know so what's the next step and how do you well what's it mean for you wherever you are yeah and and how do we go forward and mm -hmm. and you know hopefully elect people who are representative of anyways yep. we don't have to go into the waters but thanks it for your letter i yeah. appreciate it i'm glad that you felt that was fair and balanced yeah we try we yeah. try we're moving on yep we have a letter from tina hey tina it's our friend tina from delaware if you don't recall and this is entitled reference to 118. oh it says hey hey katie sean and roxy hope the puppers feel better oh uh puppy parlance really quickly roxy's all good and dandy um this last monday we took her to the vet because she was due for her bordadella i always say bordadella and i know that's not what it's called it's like bortella vaccination and rabies vaccination and oh anyway she's due for her physical her yearly pupper physical and we tried to she was supposed to have it before but because she had an eye infection they were afraid to give her any shots and anyway long story short she's all good and dandy and that little bump on her leg it's just it's honestly just like a boop, like somebody poked her and she just keeps licking it she's just sure that's gonna heal it i don't know why dogs do this to themselves and we started wrapping it with some ointment and the vet was like don't worry about it it's healing just fine that made me feel good roxy's healthy because i was worried and then i just heard back from the vet via text yesterday that all her labs came back good and she's healthy girl but now we have to as part of her yearly physical we have to get a urine and stool sample and you know where you and i go in and we just like pee in a cup a homegirl here you know only pees when she's excited or when she has to go so we have to collect that and pick it's it kind pick of it. interesting that they they give you a little tray that you slide under them when yeah, they go quick. to pee and so then you catch it because you only need a milliliter of urine mm -hmm. she said i don't know what that is but yeah i'm really it's like a, a small drop. amount yeah they just need to test something i just drop yeah. it in something more than a drop but yeah it's, it's yeah. a small amount so. so and we always collect our stool samples because we're responsible dog owners with doggy bags <laughs> why do they call why do they call the food you take home from a restaurant going into a doggy bag i just realized how fucking disgusting that is why don't you no, just call it a shit bag no I put it in my poop bag it's like you're taking the food home for your dog you know like oh. a, i'm gonna bring home these scraps sort of deal i think that's where the term comes from not a dookie bag <laughs> Because in my head, doggy bag means dookie bag. Yeah, that makes sense. Put it in dookie bag. Man, there's nothing worse. I mean, I've gotten over it. Sean but... really did not like picking up her poops. Like <sighs> if we were on a walk together, I'd be like, I got it, don't worry. Yeah, that's where we have that shovel thing with the rake. Mm -hmm. You can scoop it up that way. But um, we have construction, so we've just been using the bags and picking it up that way. But Biodegradable bags, don't worry. People a plastic pregnant. bag. And there's just this thin barrier between you and your dog. Maybe you need a poop glove. You put your glove on, you put your right. hand in the, poop so you mittens. don't feel the warm poop yeah definitely the the temperature really gets me <laughs> you got to put your gardening gloves on yeah so if you see sean walking in austin on the side of the road with garden gloves on he's there to pick up the poops right 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 <laughs> i i do like the probiotics that she's taking because her poops are like little rocks now they're normal they so you're not like trying to like smear it off the grass not oh. to get too gross but you know those ones everybody who has dogs knows what we're talking about yeah these are just like you pick up a rock yeah you pick up a little turds my mom calls them tootsie rolls mm, that's mm. good yes all right sorry guys we didn't mean to take into <laughs> poopy parlance a, a puppy parlance turned into poopy parlance yeah. and now we're back sorry tina had nothing to do your your letter's great <laughs> moving on it says currently watching episode 118 talking about presidents visiting etc yes the traffic joe biden comes home almost every weekend and if you've ever been to delaware you know it's small one road has an accident and has a domino effect on all of the adjacent roads okay every time he comes they have to shut down about five major highways until he gets to his house i feel like that's so rude i want joe biden to have a jet pack like just, he was promised as a younger man when they were talking about the sign <laughs> which well, says why can't they just fly a helicopter to his front yard right, right? riddle right. me this no but a jet pack for joe biden wouldn't that be cool like that, that would be dangerous i would have confidence in a president who flew around with a jet pack 
What is our, what is the puppies doing? She was just chewing on a light, chewing on electrical items, you know? Oh my God. But yeah, if, uh, if the president showed up with a jet pack at a meeting, I'd be like, that guy seems to have it together. He knows what's up. Yeah. Joe Biden, I would be worried if, you know, maybe you would have a jet pack pilot or something that would be good. Yeah. Cause I, I agree with Tina that he should just fly a helicopter to his front yard. I mean, he's the goddamn president. Right. Not only are they like shutting down five major highways, so fucking up all traffic in Delaware every weekend, but then he and Jill have a beach house and it's pretty much one major road from where his actual house is to the beach, but it's about a two hour drive, give or take. And yes, everything or every time he comes home, traffic is a chaotic nightmare. Hmm. I feel you. And that sucks says hope all is well tina from delaware that's the thing is i feel like they should take into consideration where they're going and how much traffic and, and maybe they should have to travel off times like really early in the morning or late at night like come on now you're fucking it up for everybody else i feel like it's just right. rude and it's as a, a politician little... you're a servant of the people you're messing with your people mm. i don't appreciate it unsubscribe isn't, isn't uh, joe biden from scranton pennsylvania no I think he I think that's where he's from originally and now he resides in Delaware but Oh, oh, I thought you were making a joke like an office joke. No, 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 literally and I didn't I used to think Scranton didn't exist. I thought it was made up for the show until, Oh, no, no, there's a lot of Scrantons right? and one is Pennsylvania. Yeah, but I think Joe Biden may have been a a young Joe Bi a young boy growing up in Just Scranton. Just a young boy. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, I don't know. That is, you know. Does anybody know? Let us know. Okay. We have a speak pipe. Oh. Are you ready? Yes. It is from our buddy, Patty. All right. Hello, Lord and Lady and fellow OTDM land friends. It's me, Patty. Uh, I know I got to be quick with this, so I'm going to go through a couple things really quick, hopefully. Uh, okay. First thing, that word that keeps tripping y'all up is pronounced Talarvik. It's almost like Taylor, but not quite. Next thing. There's going to be a couple of fears that kind of go against my love of racing and going fast. First one, roller coasters. Hate them. Will not go near them. Will not go on them. I will take the little jalopy cars they have and do that. Yeah. That's my idea of fun in a park. Maybe go cars. Next thing, I'm afraid of freaking elevators and escalators. Don't trust them. Got stuck in an elevator as a kid. Ooh. Stairs. Much more my style. Cannot stand them. Well, I can stand stairs, just not elevators and escalators. Long story. I'll go into that later, probably, at some point. Anyways, crazy to think that this is the first time y'all are hearing my voice, considering I've known, like, Katie Forever. at least through Forever. Patreon for, like, a year. So, anyways, see y'all later. Um, yeah. Oh, and give Roxy plenty of treats and pets. It is, I, I was really enjoy that, hearing people's voices. Me too. And I was thinking that Patty, when I opened, I was like, oh, I get to hear his voice because yeah. I feel like I don't know Patty would have to look, but I feel like I've known you through at least your Patreon and through comments on videos and stuff for like years, not just one year. I think it's probably been like four years or more. I don't know. I might be exaggerating, but I had never heard his voice. And I was like, oh, that's Patty. Uh -huh. It's nice to hear a voice. Um, I, th I, he sounds like a classic American person. You know, mm -hmm. like this is an American. <laughs> yeah, but the what was the word? The Taylor Beak. Yeah, but it's close to Taylor, but not. It was like yeah. Taylor Beak. Um, thank you because we fuck that up every time. Also, I I don't I don't completely fear escalators like horribly, but we talked about how they like eat people and like break and fall. And I have to agree, I don't love them. And I I do take the stairs, especially if we're traveling. I've been sitting on a plane. If I can take the stairs, I will. If I don't have like a bunch of stuff with me, because I think it's just good for my body to move a little bit. Right. <laughs> uh, also, when it comes to roller coaster rides, Patty. Oh, yeah. My goodness. I have a love hate. Same. But mainly I hate them. And I don't like the smell of an amusement park. Mm. I mean, I know Disney pumps in smells, so Disney's different, but I don't like Disney because it has too many kids. That smell you get in your hands? You know, yeah, like that, metal? The metal. It, like, what is that that makes metal smell that way? Maybe Ben knows. Is ben that all the sticky fingers that kids have? Like cotton candy meets metal? I don't know. I don't know, but that horrible, that horrible vomit meets metal smell of an amusement park right. slash your county fair. Or yeah. maybe that's just me. Well, also amusement parks, there's always something horrific that happens. And well, those things go from town to town and they like pack them up and, you know, things well, can get broken. Carnivals? 
Yeah. Oh, no, but like fixed site. Oh, ones. like a Disney or a, a yeah. Six Flags. or. Apparently there's one in like New Jersey maybe that was like mm-hmm. horrific in the 60s and 70s, like very, very dangerous. I, I forget what the name of it, but there was always severe accidents because it was designed and built by somebody who didn't really know what they're doing. The major How ones are typically safe. How can people really go? I don't understand. I don't know. Safety laws were different back maybe. in the day. But now, you know, they're supposed to be super safe. And I think for the most part they are because they have to go through all these tests. You know, mm-hmm. if you're going to Six Flags. However, I, I don't like it. And yeah. in Montreal growing up, we have an amusement park, La Ronde. Mm-hmm. And Is that the round? Yeah. The circle? Yeah. Okay. Um, but they had uh, the, the monster. And the monster series. Oh, that, that's like famous, isn't it? Like wood? Is it was it a, the biggest wooden roller coaster in the world for yeah. a while. At least that's what we were told. Wood kind of sketches me out, though, because it can get rotted and also moves. Like, <laughs> yes, and it adds the excitement of like, I'm going to die, right? It adds to the excitement <laughs> slash fight flight <laughs> response. I still remember getting on that thing. That was the first roller coaster I'd ever been on. I'm like, I don't know, 11. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I saw or didn't see, but I heard Stevie Ray Vaughan play mm. guitar that night. I was standing in the parking lot Who when we were that? leaving home. Stevie Ray Vaughan? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a famous painter. No, but f- no, he's a musician. But uh, is he with Texas. a band that I would know? Oh, uh, it's just his name is Stevie Ray yeah, Vaughan, and, and people would know him. Fabulous as Stevie. Thunderbirds. That was him oh, with I his brother. I don't know any of these things. Okay. He, he was like a, one of the best guitarists that ever lived, uh, and that was super Slash. Fun absolutely okay. no but in the pantheon of greats like he's like mm. a, a Jimi hendrix um, oh, okay yeah Jimi hendrix would be another one yeah. i would know of uh, but from the late 70s uh through the i think he passed away in 90 through 91 something oh, that like doesn't that. matter yeah i just didn't know who that was i just still don't know who it is but anyways i remember sitting in in uh, on this roller coaster for the mm-hmm. first time and i was like this is gonna be amazing you know a young sean wide-eyed and like the world i still haven't you know, explored everything. And so <laughs> the world is all new. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go on a roller coaster. It's going to be. And uh, I remember that, you know, the, the bar comes down and sits uh-huh. on your lap. Yep. And then all of a sudden, tick, 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 it's, the it's, build, it's going. The anxiety build. Yeah. And it's like on a chain, right? Mm-hmm. Like it pulls you and it starts pulling us. I feel up like pretty that's high. when children first uh, experience anxiety. Oh. Or oh, like yeah. anticipatory. <sighs> Well, the build. climb up this this hill from the starting position, mm-hmm. it's a pretty good mountain. They pull you up, or yep. at least that's how I remember it. And then- And you can't see, and you know you're getting to the top, but you don't know when you're going to crest and- boom. And I still remember the thought, no, 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 no. I want to go wait, back. Wait, wait, and I remember looking no. around like really nervously. Mm-hmm. And everyone else is like full of excitement. And I was like, I need you're to like, get out of this. I like and hate then this. I'm checking my safety bar. Like, is there wiggle room? And, you know, I weigh 90 pounds soaking wet. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to slip out of this thing. Yeah. I felt like as a kid, I was going to fall out. Like it wouldn't hold my body. We get to in. the top and the thing goes over. And my goodness. And your butt rush. comes off the seat a little. Like, huh? I was thrilled and terrified it, everything a roller coaster should be adrenaline adrenaline but i didn't like it i have to be honest although i will do them because you know i don't mind a roller coaster sometimes i i just don't like being scared so it depends on what it is because i do love space mountain at disneyland and i would if i could just pop into disneyland and easily ride it and mm. then get out of there i don't like space mountain at all oh space mountain my favorite and have, splash mountain i like that too but it's slower but, yeah that's the that's log like ride. little kid mm. yeah I mean, it's Space not the Mountain. log, right? It's called Splash Mountain. Get it right or pay the price. Right. I have a photo <laughs> mm-hmm. there, though. That That's that's one where they well, get your picture. That's what I over. love when they take the pictures because then you get to see people's true selves. Yeah. <laughs> There's some people who know it's coming. They're like, and then most people are like, ah, like they're holding on to the thing over their shoulders or onto somebody else or just screaming for, you know, screaming bloody murder. Space Mountain is terrifying because of the, it's you're in the dark. It's dark. I and love it. you're it's inside so cool. of a structure and you can kind of, you get glimpses of, of metal and stuff like or kind you'll of hear f- another cart going over like, oh i love it I love mm, that. Mm, 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 see that one i do love but the others i don't know and i only like to go the funny thing with me and i don't know because now that i'm older and i haven't been to an amusement park in a long time and i don't plan on attending one anytime soon i guess we're going to playlist maybe we'll go back but um i can only go on like three maybe four rides before i'm like i'm gonna start to feel kind of nauseous and i it won't go away it's not like i'll throw up but i just don't feel good and then it'll like ruin like hours of my day so i always like do like two and then i'll do something else i might go one more and then i'm like let's just call this for me so it's not worth it for me to go to a an, an amusement park when i'm like tapped out in an hour also it's a bit of a scam because what ends up happening is you you spend a lot of money you go to wait in line a lot it's like a three hour wait in line unless you have a fast pass yeah 
but that waiting in line is the worst. They did something. I was listening. Somebody was complaining about them changing the rules at Disney about fast passes, and I forget what it was, but they essentially now when you buy when you used to buy your season pass which is like i don't know fifteen hundred dollars some crazy amount of money um but it's like two hundred dollars to go to disneyland anyway but you if you bought your season pass it used to come with fast passes Mm -hmm. like you know they're your best customers you want them happy but um now they don't you have to like pay it's an up they upsell you to get you to fast passes and upsell you for whatever else and people are like Hmm. Damn you, Disney. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Disney. I mean, I like the movies as a kid, but I don't like the the lands or the worlds. I don't like to go, I don't like amusement parks. Yeah. Oh, that's what I meant uh, by Disney. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really care for going to those amusement parks, yeah. especially now with COVID. I mean, I just, I can't, I, I'm still having a hard time being around crowds of people. Not in a big way, but it- Sean doesn't have trouble. That's a lie. You have anticipatory regret of signing up for things that would require you to be around people. And then when you're there, you're like, that was so nice. Yeah, yeah. It's so good to see people. But I mean, I wouldn't want to necessarily be around with Roxy a bunch of- Roxy wants to see people. A bunch of strangers, you know, uh, at an amusement park waiting in line while we're all yeah. passing COVID around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we have one last letter oh, from she Ben. She's Frenched me. Oh, she's, she loves you very much. One last letter and then Roxy, we will feed you and you will we'll play with you and you will be calm. Okay. One last letter, and this rolls nicely off of your Alibaba uh, disaster that happened earlier. This is from Ben, and it is entitled, More About Road Tripping in an EV. And if you don't know what EV means, electric vehicle. It says, hey, Katie and Sean, a bit more about taking a road trip in an EV. Technically, all cars have chargers built in. The problem is finding an outdoor power outlet, particularly of a high enough voltage. Most EVs include a cable that one can plug into the wall and one that on one end and the car on the other end. Gotcha. So so a plug for the car, a charger plug. A standard outlet will charge my car about five miles per hour. So an overnight stay of 10 hours in a hotel would only add 50 miles of range because it's not enough. They're not high enough voltage. Right, right. It's essentially, it's like it's sipping it. It's like so I thirsty. I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I wondered at that. So that's what the stuff. supercharger system mm-hmm. is. That's why you get that wall panel. Thing. That's what's amazing about what Tesla did. Mm-hmm. Tesla is not just a, a car company. Mm-hmm. They're doing so many things. It's like yeah. 75 different companies inside of one. Mm-hmm. Like all the technology they're building. Yeah, that all goes behind the scenes to make everything work. Not to mention like solar panels and all sorts of shit. And then they built a charging station network mm-hmm. across the country, which is nuts to me. First of all, it's expensive. It's also trying to figure out where they need to be. Like it's all strategy, right? And and that's what, like if GM or Ford was to get into the the gasoline industry as mm -hmm. well. I mean, it's mind 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 boggling. It's also hard to say. Yeah. (laughs) But it's it's interesting, you know, Mm -hmm. they really achieved a lot. And whether it is a successful company down the road, which I believe it will be, Mm -hmm. uh, it already is. But whether it continues to be or they fall upon hard times, who knows? Yeah, because they're trying know. to achieve so many things. Yeah, but they they've really pushed the industry and they've forced the hand of all these other manufacturers to yeah, get to, on board and like mm-hmm. let's let's get the EVs going. Yeah, get it going. Okay, it says this is all I need. So talking about the regular plug. So ten hours in a hotel would only out add fifty miles of range. This is all I need to charge my car at home for daily use. Mm-hmm. But when road tripping, it really isn't enough. And that assumes one can find a standard outlet outdoors, which is not always an easy thing. That's what I wondered. Like hotels usually you just have to like park in this lot and I don't think there are outdoor outlets like accessible. I know some shopping centers do. I know that South Coast Plaza in Southern California, they had installed a bunch of EV chargers, you know, to- Well, no, he's talking about outdoor outlets, not charging stations. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. He's just saying like plug in. Yeah. But um, I know like parking lots in, South Coast Plaza. Also, we talked about in Santa Monica at the Santa Monica place. They called it like the Mount Mall. Yeah. Had them too. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of parking lot structures, it, those they have them, but not at hotels. Right, right. Just having, yeah. I which is kind of silly. Um, and that assumes that one can find that, right? Which isn't easy, the outlets. I've gotten into the habit of walking around buildings looking for these outdoor outlets, and I rarely find them near areas where one can park. Mm. I, I feel like that will have to come along as well because I don't think they thought about that with the Tesla model. I think it's like gas stations, like instead of, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, I guess you wouldn't have a, you know, 3,000 feet of electric cable. You, in your I mean, car, I guess right? you could keep it in your trunk just in case. That's why I think the tram systems of old, where 
it's hooked up to a, a grid mm, above you mm -hmm. or in the like yeah and a, then when they hit bumps a it's, third it's rail sparks. It's, yeah it's, yeah that's yeah. kind of you know yeah oh trams okay it says typically one wants to use a 240 volt outlet the most common being a i don't know if i'm saying it's nema n-e-m-a 14 to 50 outlet any place that has installed one of these outdoor um one of these outdoors intends for it to be used either for rvs or evs gotcha makes sense there are a number of types of plugs that one can get an adapter for such as a standard dryer and oven plugs with one of those i can charge about 35 miles per hour so i can fully charge the car in about 10 hours okay also some include the cable so all you need to do is just plug it in that's awesome at my recent road trip, one of the two hotels we stayed at had a charger right there, while the other one did not, although there was one that was just a short walk away. Not being able to charge the car at my destination made the trip much more painful. In the end, these only cost the hotel a small amount. Um, electricity at night can run only five cents or less per hour, so it might only cost the hotel five dollars or less to fill up my car. Mm. I am much more willing to stay at a hotel that has this service, and it will become more and more required as more EVs show up on the road. I agree. I think hotels will be forced to offer. It's an that. amenity, right? And I think mm -hmm. it. Yeah, they will. They'll have to adapt to what people are driving. Yeah. Here's what I I would like to see. But that's Dear the difference Elon, between. Oh, so, but real quick, that's just the difference between an EV and a regular car. Because regular cars, you like fill up your gas tank, you pull and you park, you're done. Right. But an EV, you'd have to like go and sit and wait and charge it. Then once it's charged, drive the hotel park. Yeah. What but, they should, what will probably end up happening, I'm guessing, is that just like a phone, and I don't use this, but a wireless charging mat where you mm -hmm. just drop your phone on it and it pulls the energy from the mat. You know how that works? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, although we don't own one. Well, those I don't are charging stations. That'd be just like a charging station because the mats have to be plugged in. Right, right, right. But I wonder if like at a hotel, you just drive your car up and you, you don't even have to plug it in anymore. It just draws the energy from the charging mat that it drives onto. I think that would be cool. Like, what's the point of we're? I mean, that's a silly, I hear you, yeah. but I feel like in the grand scheme of things that need to be worked on when it comes to operating EVs, I yeah. feel like that's like down the line. Like, I don't like plugging my car in. Be like, well, then don't get an electric vehicle. Mm. I mean, but it would just be nice. Like, you, wherever you, you park it, it's, it's yeah. just it's, I agree. It's the the convenience charged. factor. But I feel like at this point, we just need more of them in general. Yeah. Also, it would be nice if you could, like, uh, siphon uh, electricity from, not siphon like you're stealing, but take uh, electricity from another car. Like, you pull up and you, you know, if someone wanted to give you a bump, right? Well, like I think people probably can do jumper that. Jumper cables. But I think but, that's uh, also stealing. No, but like if you were a Tesla driver and I was like, Roger Dodger, this is Tesla 432. And Ben's like, over. And I was like, yes. Listen, I'm running low on juice. He's WhatsApp like, well. And he said, can I meet you in this parking lot? Yeah. And, and then it's like, you know, you get <laughs> a little electricity and, and then on you, you go. You might be able to do that. Dear Elon. Have you looked it up? No. no if can do it. It, might it might already be, be able cool, to right? If you could just like swap, swap energy with a cable. Well, I'd assume because what if you run out of juice? I'd assume there's got to be a way for someone just to give you a bump. The Tesla umbilical cord. Yeah, you know? that's what it's called. Okay, the superchargers use a huge amount of energy, up to 250 kilowatts. Oh. I don't really feel an issue with the few that can charge fat. Oh, the few that can charge faster than that. It would only save a few minutes, so it's not really worth any more. Oh, that's saying. like the Kia and stuff like that. I think yeah. that have the super. I actually found that I wanted a few more minutes stopped when using some of these faster chargers. Oh, yeah, it's like you still have shit to do. At least twice my car um, was charged enough to go on to the next station before we were actually ready to leave. Okay. Oh, so it's like not affecting you. My mom had asked me this. She just actually, I was talking to her just the other day and she had asked about that. Remember, she was like, how long do you think it takes? Because she was headed up to see my brother and stay with him for a week. And she was at a, a gas station filling up her car and these other like Tesla's had pulled in to do the electrical charge. And she said they were there when she pulled up and they were still there when she left. And so she was curious, like how long? And I had told her, Ben, I was like, we have this person who writes in, member of our community who knows a lot about this stuff. And I was like, and he said, it's like 20 to 30 minutes. Can depending. I tell you something? Yes. Do you ever play the game Clue? Yes, love Clue. And you have to guess, mm -hmm. you know, in like, this instance, I'm not guessing. Do you have guessing. blonde hair? Do they have a mustache? Yeah. They have brown eyes? They were in the they... library with the candlestick or whatever? No, that's... Oh, yeah. I was thinking guess who, sorry. Oh. Do you remember the game Guess Who? No. You had to figure out who the person was? They they sung a song, American Woman. But yeah, Clue, the the where you put who did it in the yeah. under the thing in the little envelope under the game. This is a weird tangent, but I suspect, mm -hmm. it is my I theory, suspect. 
that Ben is actually Elon Musk. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, Bet dun. you didn't see that coming. But it just seems odd because anytime Ben sends in a letter, <laughs> Elon <laughs> isn't on Twitter. So do you see where I'm going? Do you I'm know when he's the, sending this? Well, you can see the timestamp. So what I've done is I've gone onto Twitter that and I've like looked. That seems like a lot of work. And I, Sean does not do that kind of All work. All right, I'm going to come clean. So I called lying. Ben to see if Elon would pick up. That was what happened. I was like, mm -hmm. I caught you. I Again, caught you. Sean's lying. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> oh, you caught me. <laughs> he hangs up because he's embarrassed. <laughs> Isn't Doesn't Elon say he like the only tweets from the toilet? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. He seems to go to the bathroom a lot then. <laughs> he's shitting all over Twitter. Well, I don't know if he says I only. I think he says usually. Yeah, it's just when I'm like. It's when I have time, right? Yeah, he's sitting. That guy is super busy. I don't know how he functions. I don't know. Okay, so finally. Yeah. Just to give you an idea, when my wife and I moved 700 miles, I drove my Tesla and my wife a gasoline car. She beat me by maybe five to 10 minutes over that distance of 700 miles. Sure, Very it made a difference, but the amount of time is small that it saves. Mm -hmm. And i that's the thing. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And that's what my mom was kind of curious about, like how how much would it have impeded her? And I told her maybe like 10 minutes or something. So Roxy continues to hit her doorbell. If you can hear any kind of dingling, it's because she is impatient. So thanks again for all you do, Ben. Thanks, Ben. I always appreciate your insight and you know just understanding more about things. You know so much. Okay. We are up to June 28th. Marina, you are on deck first for next week's. And thank you all for understanding that we had to take a break. Last week, we were in Michigan. I suspect Marina mm -hmm. may be someone as well. Why does Sean... Why does, why I'm just kidding. <laughs> why can't people just be who they are? Marina is Marina, you know. I'm just ben kidding. is Ben. Yeah. You're Sean. I'm Katie. I hope Ben didn't nice take to offense to that. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, <laughs> I just think it's funny that you accidentally called him. I will never get past that. Wow. That's one of my favorite moments of OTDM. And also when you said, I'll miss you. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I laughed for like 10, after we cut, I continued to laugh. That was so good. Do you guys have favorite moments? And I think that's why watching the video that David redacted and our community put together um, of moments from OTDM made me cry because it was just so good. It was all. A lot of memories. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of episodes. It's weird how much water I you know, know under the bridge. Is that what they say? Water? No. No. It's, it's how much we've how much we've accomplished. How much time has gone by? How many how many minutes of content's been created? They're not all great minutes, but there's a couple of fun moments in there. There's a few snippets here and, and there. I appreciate everyone for sticking around and yes, uh, enjoying the ride with us. And I kind of feel like they're, they're yeah, we're all part of. They're, I feel like they're part of the podcast. Like we it. are. Only, we're in this together, creating it together. All right. Well, if you're listening, uh, feel free to give it a review Share wherever it. you're listening or watching. Tell somebody how crazy it is. Tell somebody yeah. to listen. If you've ever been stuck in an elevator. Patty I'd, said he has. I know. I'd like to hear that I'd story. I'd like to hear that. He said it's a story for another time. It's going to yeah. take. But if anyone else has been stuck in an elevator. That reminds me of the office when Pim, Pim, I was going to say Jim and Pam and then it came out Pim. Mm. But it was Pam and Dwight get stuck in the elevator very briefly and Dwight immediately pees into the corner. And she's like, what are you doing? He's like, we have to... <laughs> You have to, to establish, establish a pee corner. She's like, we've only been here for like 30 seconds. He's like, I've been drinking a lot of water. Remember, he has that backpack with water. And, and then Jim wants her to get out. He's like, just come through. And she's like, I'm afraid of my body getting cut in half. And also there's pee on the floor. I would never try and get out of an elevator for fear of being chopped it, in half. Same, same. I would just wait until they get they it to the floor. It, Don't be I impatient. Could, That's no, a big decision. Just wait. You don't want to be like the, you know, the paper cutter with the sharp blade. Let's stop talking about it. It's making me the very noise. nervous. I'd rather pee in a corner with Dwight than. I mean, if you get through. caught in half or cut in half caught and you hear that cut. noise, you're like, oh no. That's me. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> what a way to end, Sean. Yes. Okay. Well, that's it for this week. Don't get cut in half. Be patient. Yeah. That's, Here's my advice. Don't get out of the elevator. <laughs> Wait for the proper authorities. That's this week's Safety. teachable moment. <laughs> Okay, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.